Our next panelist has been in the real estate industry since she graduated high school. She is the host of two podcasts based out of Central Arkansas, I Hate Real Estate and Block Talk. Please welcome Jamie Taylor. And joining Jamie on the stage, this panelist is an author of several published books. Uh, she is the owner of the first bilingual publishing company in Arkansas. She's the host of several podcasts, including the Spanglish Transcending La Familia. Please welcome Aislet Zeledon. We got it. Thanks for having us. So, same format. Tell us about your content and some things that you've learned about podcasting. Oh, here we go. <laughs> well, first of all, congratulations. You said my name right. Not very many people get it, right? So, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, my name is Iceleth Zeladon. I go by Sachi Ice Queen. It's my stage name because I'm also a poet, um, not just an author. Uh, so, whenever I do public speaking or anything like that, and I recite my poetry, it's Sachi Ice Queen. So um, in the professional world, I'm known as Ice Lot Celadon. Um, so my nonprofit's called Learning Idiom, and we teach English and Spanish virtually. And we started on Clubhouse, the Clubhouse app, and so it kind of just developed into uh, just having a podcast. And so we, it's, it's our way to stay connected with our students. We talk a lot about mental health. We talk a lot about parenting. We do parenting summits just to kind of uh, help parents out there with content that they need to know how to better parent their kids. And I'm a special needs mom, so that's something that we always include. Um, any kind of special ne needs parents, they always, we always need help <laughs> with any kind of resources. So uh, we just created a, a community, of a bilingual community. And so that kind of led us to having our own um, publishing um, company because we, uh, I've been in the publishing industry for about 10 years. And so uh, that's mainly the reason why we help people get published both in English and in Spanish. And we also have bilingual books as well. So uh, that's mainly what we, we just kind of talk about mental health and those, those types of things. And Transcending La Familia, we just kind of talk about um, we always like to have like different accents because there's the students and they we want them to learn the different accents or just be aware of the different accents in different cultures um, in, in different countries as well. So um, the English one is called Moving Mountains for You. And that one we just kind of help promote, you know, um, small businesses that are locally. Um, and so it's it's fun. I, I like to do it. I think my favorite one. Um, we, we have not only locally, but we also do have uh, guests that are like from Norway and different, um, you know, English because it's for students. So we want to make sure that we have the different types of English as well. Um, the one that we did recently was for the Juneteenth event. And so because we do a lot of parenting summits, we wanted to also do one where we had, you know, multiple guests on it. Uh, and so we just celebrated a, like, the black community and how um, just their culture and how enriching it is. And so we highlighted three. Um, we had we had a singer songwriter and then we also had a business owner and then we also had a f uh, basketball coach. So um, we just kind of help the community as much as we can. And um, that's just what we do. So. Oh, that's right. They gave me my own, which was a dangerous decision on your part. Um, <laughs> my name is Jamie Taylor. I originally started in podcasting, actually, on the backside of trying to build a real estate business. I really wanted to have some notoriety in the community, and I had a bunch of friends with cool camera equipment. Um, so they were like, hey, why don't you start a podcast? I'd never really done anything like that before. And similar to someone who spoke earlier, I wanted to showcase people in Little Rock and in Central Arkansas who added value to our community. So I started the Block Talk, and the idea was I was going to be Jamie from the Block, and I was going to tell you all about the people that 
added value to your block of time. And so it's interesting to sit here right now and look out here and see like people who I originally interviewed on that show who are like now these crazy successful podcast platform havers. And like, it's beautiful to see, but it's one of those things that like, this is a beautiful place to live and there are incredible stories to tell and no one was doing it. And so I was like, fine, if no one's going to do it, I'll do it. And so it was a passion project. Um, once I got in front of the camera, I fell in love with it. But as my real estate career continued to grow in central Arkansas, I became very annoyed with the industry in which I had become so infatuated. So after 20 years of real estate experience as an appraiser, an agent, a broker, and an expert witness, I decided to start I Hate Real Estate, which is the platform where we tell the truth about all of the experiences that you really have. When HGTV wraps that up into 30 minutes, we tell you what really happened behind the scenes. I have a co-host who is an attorney, so we really dive in there and find out what happened, why it happened, and who should have probably done their job better. Um, so those platforms for me have been super exciting. They're my passion and they're where I find my most energy. So it's been a great experience so far. Speaking of platforms, uh, I saw you mentioned that you started out on Clubhouse. I know when Clubhouse came out, it was kind of one of those things where everybody jumped in. They're like, oh, I'm kind of curious about this. This is like a live podcast where I guess you jump in and sometimes they'll bring me on stage and I get to talk or I just listen to you know, famous people talk about nothing at all. Whatever happened to Clubhouse? Is it still around and does it have a new audience? So, yeah, Clubhouse is still around. I mean, there it's uh, it's a little different now. You know, you can actually have replays on, uh, you know, so we still teach on there and we keep our lessons on there. So anybody that wants to learn in either English or Spanish, they have access to the lessons on, you know, in our in our club. Um, it is very much still a community of people. You know, it helped a lot of people, a lot of, um, you know, artists, they would do you know, concerts on there. And so during the pandemic when nobody could leave, that um, I think that's why Clubhouse thrives so much because they lacked that audio connection because there's, I mean, even on Facebook and, you know, lives are always fun too, but just that audio of just that voice of, you know, listening. Um, since I'm a, spir a spiritual uh, life coach as well as a therapeutic art coach, for me, um, that was one of the reasons why I got on the platform was because I wanted to hear my clients. I wanted to hear their tone because that's how you can really know like exactly what kind of traumatic thing they're going through or, you know, like you just can connect a lot more with the actual audio. Um, but yeah, Clubhouse is still around and there's like a chat version now. You know, in the beginning, there was no text, you know, there was no way to um, communicate through you know, just words, <laughs> other than like typing words, it was just um, audio, but now there is an option to have a chat. So you can actually have an interaction of, even if you have, you know, more than one panelist or, you know, just you, you can still be in the chat and you can link um, um, on the top of the, of the room, you can link a specific link that you want them to go to, or, or like, say, if you want to teach on, you know, some kind of Google doc or whatever, you can just put the link on the top and they can click it while they're still listening. So yeah, it's still very much, um, around. And Jamie, using 20 years of experience in real estate, like I said, you came right out of high school, right into real estate. And now you've got this podcast that's been going on for a while. I hate real estate where you break it down using all that. So are you still dabbling in real estate? And <laughs> I hate it. Sugar head no immediately. <laughs> yeah. Well, the funny part about it, so that's what's interesting about this story and sitting here now too is like it's so funny too that you teach people how to speak Spanish because you yo aprendo español. So I'm trying to learn. Um, but what's interesting is like my story in, in Little Rock and the whole idea of podcasting really is what opened up the idea of like let's try a new avenue of profession. So for me, straight out of high school, yes, went straight into um, appraisal, but I had a child at 21, and so I was trying to figure out like what do I do to survive, and that was the only thing I knew how to do was real estate. So I kept capitalized on that and continued to build through that business. But what the platform gave me was information about who I was identifying with and who was identifying with me, who wanted to hear my voice and the way I said things, who wanted my information and my expertise. And I was able to build a platform of people that would follow me. So the lesson I learned really between block talk and I hate real estate comes down to hyper local versus global reach. And so when you talk about clubhouse, you talk about things like that, you're able to touch people all over the world. My best example of that is starting 
starting the first Block Talk podcast episode was actually like my boss at iRealty and I, um, Kristen Kennan. We had an episode together where we like talked about our new principal broker that we had hired. And then fast forward like a year later, I had Instagram Jesse Itzler, who is like this crazy wild celebrity married to Sarah Blakely, who's the founder of Spanx. And sure enough, we had a 45 minute Zoom interview on the Block Talk podcast. And it was like, wow, you can reach somebody who's a multi-billionaire or you could tell the story of someone in your very own backyard who's empowering and changing the lives of people in your neighborhood. And the biggest thing to know about it at the end of the day is you are a messenger and you are a platform. So if you just move yourself out of the way and allow those people that are on your show to tell their story and be showcased, you get your expertise and you get your thought leadership. But at the end of the day, you empower them to do what they do best. And that's really the gift in all of it. Absolutely. I want to piggyback on that, too, because because we, you know, um, Zeladon help, we publish people's stories and. Um, that's one of the reasons why we actually wanted to do publishing because so many people like, even though everybody's like, we're talking about podcasting, but really people's stories matter. Like you matter. Like they're every single person has a different story. Maybe it might be similar to someone else's, but nobody has your personal experiences. Nobody is you. And so that's what we wanted to definitely, you know, just, you know, just kind of expand on that. And so all of the interviews that we do is we really just get to know who they are. Um, we just let them kind of inspire and, you know, encourage someone else. And so if you're, um, you know, that all of the, all of the guests that I always um, interview, I do my research because I want to make sure that my audience is going to be able to receive that message. So whoever you, that you're, whatever niche that you're looking into in your podcast, make sure that you know that you, who your audience is so that they don't get confused. Cause, uh, that's definitely something that, you know, people talk about, Oh, okay, well, they have a lot of followers. Well, if your followers don't align with their followers, you're actually going to lose people. So yeah, this is definitely something that's important. You're both very busy. So you both have a lot of different things going on. I know Jamie was very modest about it. Hasn't talked about, of course, Aptigy and all the work that you're doing there, the major <laughs> workouts that you're going to. If you follow her on social, you see all the different things. But plus you have your own personal life. So how do you decide if you want to go ahead and do- you know dedicate a portion of your life, either every week or every couple of weeks, every month, whatever it is, to creating these podcasts, to put them out there. Why is it so important to do that? Okay, so this part, I think, is where the real authenticity comes out. So for me, this has always been a passion, right? It was never a way to make money. It was never a way to empower myself to become like an, in, in what are they called, influencers? like and subscribe. Um, I really was doing this because I believe in Central Arkansas and I see the talent in this room and I see what it's grown into and what you are and what, you know, so that's a passion. I want to do it and that's why I was doing it. So it's personal money, it's personal time. And to be truthful, I never looked at the monetizing and I sat here during this thing and I armed my assistant next to me and I'm like, all right, I'm going to call all these people and be like, hey, how do I actually do it though? Because I was just telling stories, and uh, you know what I mean? So to answer your question, I find the time today based on what I wanna do. Like uh, my involvement with Plaza Frida is because I'm passionate about the community and I think that Plaza Frida is a great opportunity to connect people in our community, especially the Hispanic and Latinx communities to be elevated and empowered to um, be more included in what's going on in our city here in Little Rock. Um, the Block Talk is starting tomorrow on the first series of mayoral interviews. So we will be interviewing all of the candidates for mayor in the city of Little Rock at a very poignant time in our city so that we can bring that message to millennial voters and people who like get on the Facebook to watch their politics. Um, But the main goal of this thing, what I'm trying to say is that authenticity is king in all of it, right? So figure out who you are and what your message is, and then be fearless in the pursuit of letting that out. And so to me, it doesn't really matter. I wake up every day and I face what's in front of me. And so sometimes that's my angry toddler, my pissed off teenager, Uh, might be a podcast episode, might just have a full day at Aptogy, but whatever it is, I'm game. So when it comes to personal life, like I'm a big mental health advocate just because, you know, (laughs) yeah, I'm a special needs mom too. So like, I don't know, you know, any special needs, give them a hug. Like literally they need that hug. (laughs) Thank you. You need five hugs every day, by the way, Uh, just to mentally survive. Um, So there's just so much, you know, things that you can like, when it comes to personal time, make sure you take that time for yourself. A lot of people don't, especially if you're a parent, you probably, 
you're doing so much for your kids, you're doing so much for your spouse, you're doing so much for everyone around you, but make sure you take that time for yourself because you'll have a way better day, way better week because you know, that's that day of rest, you know, I'm Jewish, so that's very big in our culture. <laughs> so that day of rest is definitely important. So however busy your life may be, take, make sure you take at least full five to 10 minutes just to kind of connect with yourself, because that's you, you that the reason that we can probably do all these things is because we make sure that we take that time to plan to to do all these things, you know, we take that time. So make sure that you're take you're making your time then time isn't making you and so that's yeah awesome thank you uh we got time for a couple of questions from the crowd anybody have any questions for jamie or Isled? jorge you look like you have a question in your mind <laughs> oh i did want to mention everyone was talking about the video aspect i don't know if anybody knows but in spotify you can actually have a video version of it now so I didn't hear anybody say that and definitely wanted to let y'all know that, yeah, Spotify, there is an option for video now, so. Um, Just something to add to that? Yeah, the other thing I was gonna add to that is video was actually kind of what got me into it. So we started with the video piece and like listening back to everybody else having started with audio and moved to video, for me, it was easy to figure out who my audience was because they were elicited by that video and then I was able to build them in. But it was definitely more like the more expensive and more difficult approach was to start with video and work your way back. So that would be like a lesson I've learned to share. And then the last thing I would say just that I wanna share with the whole group is that like you don't know where one connection is gonna turn into into another, into another, into another. And so, so many people in this room are connected with each other in other ways. And so I would empower you to like, get your voice out there, let people know who you are because you don't know whose life you can affect or change with your vision or your message. Yeah, for sure. So I'm gonna ask about the obvious. Front row has been pretty empty, but we have this gentleman here with the camera that's <laughs> filming you. Okay. So you asked me about this earlier, about having your own social media team coming in and filming this and taking photos uh, for you know, social and promotion, that type of thing. Why is that important? And why have you committed to it? Okay, so I finally committed to having a full-on social team uh, because um, Alex, who's sitting there right there, she's my chaos coordinator, that's her official job title. Um, I finally realized that carrying it all by yourself is the, the best possible way to burn out and to make yourself less useful than you can be as a messenger to your community or an opportunity to be used for the betterment of someone else. And so having a team behind me allows them to like not just capture what I'm doing, but to get it from their perspective, right? My ego will tell me all the time, do this, do this, do this. But like, I have no business telling me what to do. <laughs> They're probably better at that. And so what I do is I show up and I do the best at being me and that's connecting people and getting out my message and I let them collect the content and distribute it. That being said, it goes back to like what Sarah and Susan were talking about. Like they've built these massive platforms being authentic to themselves. And so if I just go out and be authentic and leave the work up to, to Roman and to Cairo Creative and to Alex, then it just looks better on me that way. So I'm committed. <laughs> Awesome. Isla, how do you collect your content for social media and promotion? So when it comes to social media, uh, it depends on which platform you choose. Make sure you know which platform is more beneficial for you. Because a lot of people will say, like, if you don't like a platform, don't get on it. Because that's that's not going to, you're not, you're not going to want to be on it. And so it's, it's just make sure you choose, you know, maybe two to three that you really, really like and just stick with them because that way you're going to enjoy it. If you enjoy it, then other people are going to enjoy it. If you're going to be like, oh, I don't want to be on this. Well, then you're not going to have good content on it because you're not you already have that mindset of, well, I don't really like this one. You know, so so, you know, just choose the one that you're more interested in, um, you know, on TikTok. It, everyone's talking about TikTok right now and uh, Instagram. The Reels is the same exact platform. So if you and now there's shorts on on um youtube so th there's just so many things and facebook also has it too so just make sure that you choose the ones that you like um you know vine isn't around anymore <laughs> so uh but you know just make sure you choose the ones that you like to do because then you'll be able to and make sure whenever they're doing those updates you know what's going on with those updates because Nowadays, they're doing updates on all the time. And so if you're if your social media is glitching or whatever, it's probably because you haven't updated it. And so it's just, you know, I just I just kind of choose the ones that I like to do. And those are the ones that I just choose to do. So. 
Oh, I just had an idea to tell you. I forgot. This was a great tip someone gave me a while back when I started I Hate Real Estate. Google has this whole thing where the public asks questions, right? They type it into Google and they're like, how do I build a house? How do I buy a house? So I went out there and find subject matter that the public was asking questions about correlated with real estate. And that gave me an entire library of questions to ask and topics to cover. And so you can do that no matter what industry you're looking at, whether it's weight loss or media or traveling estate, you can go on there and say, hey, what's the public asking about that? And then answer those questions as your content library. Awesome. Very good information. Thank you both. And Jorge, thought of a question. Jorge, you have a question. I saw it on your face earlier. Now it came up. Are you looking at, you're looking at me, but are you asking them? Okay. Okay. So, <laughs> okay. So, uh, my favorite one was the one that I got to film with, um, the voice of Donald Duck. Nice. Um, that was, that was my favorite one. Um, Clubhouse was the way that we connected, by the way. <laughs> I was on a three day conference in um, Clubhouse. And so we connected because we were in the rooms. They call them rooms if you don't, if you're not aware with what Clubhouse is. And so we were, he was one of the artists since I'm a poet. Um, I recited my poetry um, and I got to sing one of my Hebrew songs on there. And so we were in that room together. And so I was, I just connected with him. I was like, hey, you know, you want to be on my podcast? And so he's like, yeah, sure. And so he got to, and the, the reason that I like that one too is because it made my son smile so big. Like he was so excited. He was like jumping for joy. But then whenever he saw me like, like videoing with him, he was so shy. <laughs> he's like, he did not want to talk to us. So it was for two reasons. Cause like he's employed by Disney. That was super cool. But, and he's from Norway. And, but that was my favorite one just because I got to see the reaction of my son, but also cause I was like, wow, that's he, he, the way that we connected was really cool because we were all part of this like uh, Lingua Couture um, conference. And it was like in 130 countries and, you know, like 40 different languages. So it was, it was really cool to be part of that conference and then have that evolve into like, she was saying, you know, you never know where one con one, one contact will lead. Well, uh, a fellow poet, you know, she invited me to this conference. And so I got to meet that person. And so it was, it was cool to, to how the world just, just connected and how you, but the only way that you can do that is if you connect with them, you know, they're the, the worst thing that they can say is no. And so, um, that was my favorite, um, episode is Don, the voice of Donald Duck. Um, well, it would, I feel like this would be a hard one because there's people in the room that I want to point out and be like, you were the best episode for sure. But the truth of the matter is there was an episode of the Block Talk podcast where I interviewed somebody named Giovanni Leva. Giovanni Leva owns a business here in Little Rock called Leva's Coffee. If you've ever had a coffee at Nexus or you've ever driven out west to that bank complex, you'll see Leva's Coffee out there. I had never met Giovanni, similar to many of my podcast guests before. And he told me the story about how he moved here from Guatemala and he started his business and was selling his his family's coffee that was made on that farm here in Little Rock. And he was the first graduating citizen um, here in Little Rock from Pulaski Tech that was non-English speaking when he got here. So he would share with me the struggle of like waking up at night and having to like not know how to say what he was trying to say and trying to graduate and being in the central Arkansas area. And as he's telling me the story, I'm watching him describe how he used this area in particular and specific <laughs> to build a coffee business that made an impact, not just in his personal life and not just in central Arkansas, but he was able to go back to Guatemala and start a school and teach students how to build sort of a life around, hey, this is what you can do with coffee beans. It's not just about we can grow coffee. We can turn it into a business. We can give opportunity to the people around us. And that's what speaks to me about not just Central Arkansas, but podcasting. You, if you are good in front of a camera, you're great on a microphone, you connect with people like, cool, what you do with that is use it. Find a way for people's stories to come through you and get the ability to have them share that because then that inspires other people to start their mission, to share their vision and to create something around them that can truly change the world at large. And so that was my favorite episode. And the reason why is because not only is their coffee good, but the mission is amazing. Yeah. yeah. Thank you both. So where can we listen to Jamie? You want to tell us where you can listen to you? Okay. So you can find me on iTunes, Spotify, Spotify. That's a new platform. You can find me on iTunes, Google, Play, Spotify, YouTube. All of it is video and audio. You can talk with Block Talk with Jamie Taylor or I Hate Real Estate. I said. 
So Minds you can find on Google, on Anchor, um, on uh, Radio Public. Uh, all you're, the ones that are blanking Anchor. all the all yeah, the things. All of the, all yeah. The, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Moving Mountains for You is the one that's in English, so you guys would probably just you know listen to that one. Um, my name is very, very unique. It's very different. It's so um, if you can't find me with my name, then Sachi, S-A-C-H-Y, Ice Queen. Um, <laughs> and so that's, I, yeah, this, you can, if you Google me, I, it's, it's everywhere online because yeah. my name is so different. So. so you have SEO working for you already <laughs> from birth. Yes, yes, for sure. Yeah, gotcha. Yeah. Oh, another thing I did want to mention is nobody really talks about, you know, Google and how um, when you have your own business on there, like the way that you can just post on Google. Um, if you post on there regularly, you'll, you know, whenever someone searches something like a podcast or whatever, you'll go up in the in the search. So for sure. Just saying. Thank you both. Yeah. I was Give telling her it was good yeah. to meet her. <laughs> Jamie looked like she had something else to say. She always like gives that look. I'm like, are you going to say something? I don't know. No, I was I'm so excited. I was like, can she come home with me? She's cool. Yeah. <laughs> We're taking that mic from you. Thank you.